lecture which is as you can see from this picture here this is a historical lecture basically we are talking about encryption techniques that have been used in the past none of these we use I mean, like we use actually these techniques today but in a very different format so we are talking about classical encryption technique historical encryption so we talk about symmetric cipher model substitution techniques transposition techniques then product cipher stenography those five things and so the first thing is symmetric model in the symmetric model basically what happens is that you have a key you use that to encrypt something and the receiver has the same key and they use that to decrypt the same thing it's very simple one key the same key you use to lock and the same key you use to unlock this is the most common thing right for so all your home key is symmetric home locks are symmetric and also much of the encryption that we even do today is symmetric so that secret key the main problem is the secret key is that if somebody got the secret key you are in trouble and second thing is that how do you get the secret key to the other side right so those are we will talk about those problems later on but as long as you have the secret with the other side you can use it as a key and then you can do this so some of the key terms are plain text basically the one that thing that you want to send cipher text is the one that is encrypted cipher is the algorithm key is what we talked about and cipher is the basically encrypt the cipher is decrypt cryptography is this whole field crypto analysis is basically analyzing the, you know basically so that you can get the key okay and cryptology and cryptography yeah so that basically you know cryptology is in loose cryptography and crypto analysis so basically this is um, this is this is um, um crypto analysis is the bad side of cryptography and this is the good side of cryptography you know the the as we call it red team and and white team white team and red team so this is the red team red team is one that breaks on I mean, that so basically whenever you have security thing you have to have two teams one is designs and one is breaks so that is for testing so this is the code breaking and this is the cryptography and the combination has to be cryptography so cryptography can be a three there are three techniques that is generally used substitution transposition and product and we will talk about those today and there are two kinds of keys we use single key that we talked about a minute ago and two key that we will talk about someday all right key that is a public key and then there are two ways it can be done block or stream again we will not talk about today but so today our lecture is limited to substitution transposition and product and before we get into cryptography crypto analysis means basically breaking in cryptography whatever that is there are lots of techniques there so crypto analysis is two types one is analytic is that you somehow do some mathematics and figure out how to break things and that is done and many codes have been broken that way many wars have been won that way believe it or not but and the other method is brute force brute force is just try every possible password or every possible key and and that sometimes works sometimes doesn't and that basically depends upon how complex it is to do the computation so for example if your key size is 32 bits so there are two ratio 32 combinations and if you can do one combination per microsecond then it will take 35 minutes to break it so nobody uses 32 bits these days right 168 bit keys used to take at this rate one operation per microsecond will take so many years but even today that one is too little because nowadays we can do lot more i think we can do about 10 days to 4 or 5 operations per microsecond so computers are becoming faster and so the years are beginning days and you know same thing will happen to these numbers tomorrow right so nowadays we use 512 bits keys government uses 1000 the military uses 5000 and so on so forth 
set with keys. Because more secrecy you need, and more you want protection, bigger keys you need. So first thing is substitution. Substitution is simple. And well invented 2,000 years ago, Caesar himself invented it. Basically, if you want to send something, instead of sending that, you send the letter which is, in this example here, is third letter. So instead of M, you say M N O P, you send a P. Instead of E, E F G H, you send an H. And so on and so forth. You just skip two letters, go to the third one, and send that. So if this is the message sent, the receiver can figure out what was the message. Right? And so basically what it is is that we are transforming A to D, B to E, and so on and so forth. If we gave each letter a number, starting with 0 to 25, then all we are saying is that the cryptid, uh, the ciphered text is equal to plain text plus K, where K is 3 in this example, mod 26. That's the mathematical formula, P plus K mod 26. Now, K is the key. In this case, the key is 3. Right? Everybody, this makes sense? And the decryption algorithm is C minus K mod 26. Now, the weakness of this algorithm is, of this particular method is that there are only 26 keys, 0 through 25. 0 is not a good key because if you use 0, it's a plain text. So you have only 25 keys to be exact, right? And uh, so somebody can just try all 25 and they will be, they will know the key in a minute, or maybe in a second. But this was good 2,000 years ago. What we do today is a little bit more complicated. We could do a random, sh random substitution. We could say, well, A translates to D, B translates to K, C translates to V, and so on and so forth. And so the key is not just one number, it is 26 numbers. Right? This will produce 26 factorial keys, and that will take some time. Right? However, better you do this or you do previous one. I'll do some more that we say one of the weaknesses of the languages themselves is that they use some letters more often than the others. So here it is a picture shown that E is used most often and then comes T and so on and so forth. And this is the order E T R N I O A S. So whenever you get a message, regardless of what substitution they have used, you find out which is the most common letter and think that that is E. Like try out E. Then you take the second most common try out as T and so on and so forth. And then generally you use quite a bit T H E the in English. Right? So figure that out. And so you don't really need to try out 26 factorial combinations. You can really do much faster. And this weakness remains in all substitution methods, so we need to find a way of getting rid of that, right? So there are two other forms. So basically, how do we extend? Well, one way is that why do one letter? Just do two letters. You could take, if it is AB, then this translates to that. If it is AC, then it translates to that. If it is AD, then it translates to that. So you can take two input letters and produce two output letters. That is play, fair, cipher. Cipher. So play, fair algorithm is described in the book. I didn't think it was critical for us here, but you know, please read it and um, know about it. And then you could do three letters, A, B, C. And then you have a lot more combinations. And that is called Hill cipher. And that is described in the book too. Or you could do what we call polyalphabetic substitution. Everything that we did so far is called monoalphabetic. We take one code, one key, and that's it. The key could be 26 letters, but there is only one key. In polyalphabetic, we have many, many codes, many, many keys, and we say, okay, for the first one, we'll use key number one, second one, we'll use key number two, so we keep changing the keys. Polyalphabetic. So, actually, the key was, in old days, it was called alphabet. And so now we have many alphabets, okay? 
And so, for example, um, here, if our key in this case is deceptive, we could write the word deceptive, 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 deceptive. And this is your plain text. And we could add these two to make this cipher text. D plus W is Z, E plus E is I. Everybody understands how that comes? Right? We talked about 0 to 25. You just do that and you, you get this. So this is now, so this one basically for W, we used a transformation where A would have been translated to D. For E, we used a transformation where A would have been translated to E. Right? So this is, we are using a different transformation for each of these letters by, and the transformation E is this. And all we need to tell the other side is deceptive, one word. All right, I think, okay, well, we can continue for five more minutes. So then we have one time pattern. Now the problem with the deceptive is that, um, you know, if uh, this is very short key and then uh, if they know once, you know, then they, they can basically find out all the key, all the, all the other text as well. So then people said, okay, why don't we just use very long keys rather than just one seven letter word deceptive and then use it just one time. Every time we do something, we use a new key. All right, that is called one time pad. In one time pad, you use a random key and as long as the message is, and then it is very secure. Because even if you found out the key, no big deal, you found one message. My other messages are secure. All right, and this is used by the, that you have seen people using something to find out their password. Right, their device. They may use that password only once. Right? And then they have to just next time they log in, they will use another password. You get that device tells them where the device and some so there are many mechanisms like that which are used. One time pad is used for the Alright. So the second method is transposition. Is that you don't really change the letter but you just mingle them like instant. So you want to send this thing called meet me meet me after the party or something like that, right? So you say M-E-E-T, me after the party, right? But instead of sending them, you send them like this. M-E-M-A-R-T and, and the other per side can just put it together correctly. This is called rail fence cipher, where you just use two letters. But you could do much more. You could write down many more than two rows. For example, here we have used five rows and so we said attack, postponed, until, whatever, until and W O A M X Y Z. No, until W O A M. Maybe it should be something else. But anyway, X Y Z. So what you do is you write down in rows and read it in columns. Right? But the column order could be a secret. So we could, for example, they have the key 431257, we will read column 4 first, 431257. So we will read out, um, so for example, this message will be read as fourth column first, A, sorry, fourth column, 431. I may be missing something here, I don't know. Anyway, so this is how it is read, TTNA, TTNA, APTM, APTM. And then T S U O, T S U O. So maybe this is the key. My I might have written the key wrong or something like that. But basically, you write down. You what you do is, you write down in rows, read it in columns, and the column reading order is the key. All right. So whoever gets this thing will have to jumble quite a bit to figure out what the original message was. All right. Now you could combine these two. That is the product cipher. Cipher. So basically, you could combine two substitutions, substitute once and substitute second times to make a more complex substitution, or you could combine two transpositions to make a more complex transposition, or you could combine a substitution followed by a transposition to make a much harder cipher. 
And this is what is done today. When you do DES and AES, today's thing, we do it quite a bit of this, substitution and transposition. And one of the original machines that did this combination was a rotor machine, which was used in World War II, and it had many, many rotors. You see these one, two, three, four, five, six rotors. And what they did was they did transposition and substitution. So for example, this one, this rotor was internally wired so that it will take whatever is coming here, line 24, and will put it on line 24 here at the end. So A will really become Y. Right? And this rotor was differently wired, this was differently wired, everything was differently wired. And not only that, the rotors kept moving, and that became polyalphabetic. Every time the rotor moved, a new, new substitution sequence is used. And so, the, every time the next first letter was done, and it will go like this, A will go here, from there, the second rotor it will go there, and the third it will show up somewhere there, right there, and, and B and so on and so forth. And then this will move one, one step, and you will get a different alphabet. And second step, and so on and so forth. So, depending upon how it is wired, you get a different code, but the receiver, I mean, not the receiver, the receiver has the same machine, but somebody who does not have the same machine, they will have to figure out how the router, these routers are wired and how these um, things are moving and all that. And so, and after a whole circle is done, 25 whole circle is done, and second one will move by one. And second one does the whole circle, third one will move by one. So this was the one that was used in World War II, which is 1940 something, right? So now, you know, we, obviously we have much more sophisticated one. In fact, we come to the end of the lectures, we might have just finished it. And the final technique is, steganography where you hide the information. Information can be hidden in a text, can be hidden in, in a photograph, can be anything. So for example, this is a photograph, a normal photograph of Mona Lisa, and this is a photograph in which the low order bits have the information that I want to, uh, somebody wanted to send to somebody else, right? So when the person receives the photograph, they look at the low order bits, they don't make any change in the picture. Everybody is seeing the same picture but there is information in there which can be used uh, to send the information, confidentiality. So this is without, and this is not encryption as such, right? That brings us to the end of this chapter, and the five key messages are that the key methods, now remember these two methods, substitution and transposition, right? And the letter frequency is a big, big point that you know, that is one of the first points of attack, is that people can count the letters in English alphabet. But the substitution can be extended to multiple letters and multiple ciphers, which is alphabetic, multiple, multiple alphabets. And then we saw the examples of Caesar Cipher, Playfair, Hill, Veneer. Actually, I probably skipped a little bit fast on Veneer, but we did see Veneer right here. This was Veneer, I think. So, um, and then you can have multiple stages of these to make strong ciphers, which we will do when we talk about this. Any questions about any of this? So this is all from chapter two. Please read chapter two and then do homework number two. This is due on Monday, along with the lab homework number two. This is a simple problem. Basically, you have this key 3194. Uh, basically, this is the key. The key works is basically that you know, when in the number is three, you use the third letter and so on and so forth. And um, so this is straight from the book, problem number 2.8. Okay, 2.18. So it should be saying 2.18 here, um, not 2.8, problem number 2.18.